Good morning. Thanks for your company. It's understood the prospect of a double dissolution election was raised at a dinner of cabinet ministers on Monday. The idea has been described privately to me as lunacy by some senior Liberals. For more, I'm joined by Finance Minister Matthias Cormann. Uh, Minister, thanks so much for your time. Good to be here. So was that issue discussed on Monday? Uh, well, I wasn't uh, at that particular uh, dinner on Monday. I can uh, assure you that all of us are focused on doing the job uh, we have to do. We are only uh, just halfway uh, through our first term. Uh, our intention absolutely is to serve our full term. Uh, the election is not due until the second half of 2016. So there's a job to be done. Uh, we're focused on doing the job uh, to uh, strengthen the economy, create more jobs, uh, help families and ensure that uh, Australians are safe and secure. Is this talk so the, the normal sort of thing that's considered by governments from time to time? Well, I, I can assure you that I have not been part of any meeting uh, where uh, any such discussion has taken place. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, we just uh, have to continue to get on with it, doing the job we were elected to do. So it's never been to a cabinet meeting? Well, I, I've never been part of any discussion uh, where that proposition has been put forward. Do you think it, it, it's ridiculous to be considering that, given what you say that we are only halfway through the first well, term? A lot I, I, more to do. Well, I'm, I'm not a commentator, but what I would say uh, is that obviously we've still got a lot of work to do. Uh, we uh, came into government uh, in a situation where the economy was weakening, unemployment was rising, uh, the budget position was rapidly deteriorating. We have already uh, been able to make a lot of progress. The economy is now strengthening, uh, jobs growth is strengthening and the budget position uh, is in much uh, better shape now uh, than what it was when we came into government. But there is much more work to be done so and we're all focused on doing the job that needs doing. Are you comfortable with the Prime Minister's language when he talks about the intergenerational uh, report saying that uh, it's a glass half full outlook when beyond, uh, well, beyond the next five years, that legislated trajectory that, that uh, I'm looking at it here in the, the report, there's the three trajectories, the legislated trajectory has us at 6% of GDP in terms of, in terms of uh, deficits by 2055. That's a terrible outlook. Well, it, it is a glass half full outlook, though, because uh, the previous uh, Labor government put us on a trajectory where we were headed for 12 percent uh, deficit as a share of uh, GDP. We've been able to halve that over the next few decades as a result of the uh, actions uh, so far. Obviously, our commitment uh, is to get back to surplus as soon as possible. Our commitment is to ensure that the important benefits and services uh, provided by the Australian government are sustainable and affordable uh, in the economy over the medium to long term and indeed forever. Uh, and uh, you know, if all of the measures in our budget uh, had been passed, we would essentially have been in surplus continuously uh, for, uh, for the uh, 40 years to 2054, 55, from 2019, uh, 20 onwards, all other things being equal. But uh, look, we haven't uh, made as much progress uh, as we might have liked, but we have made uh, significant progress nevertheless. And that was the point the Prime Minister was making uh, yesterday. They're so, confused messages though, aren't they? Well, I, I don't think it's a confused message at all. We inherited a very challenging situation. Uh, we have a plan uh, to get Australia on a stronger foundation for the future. Uh, we've made significant progress, but of course, yes, there is much more work to be done. Uh, but uh, of course, we should reflect on the fact that we're now in a much stronger position than we would have been uh, if we hadn't made some of the difficult or necessary decisions to put Australia on a stronger uh, foundation for the future. But you, you would accept and, and argue, I guess, with your colleagues that in inevitably, eventually, some of those tough decisions that have been stalled this time have to be addressed. Uh, well, you know, we will, the, the task of reform uh, will, uh, of course, continue uh, to uh, be pursued and have to be pursued, of course. But uh, the point is that in our first budget, uh, we did make a very significant effort and uh, most of our first budget has been dealt with. Uh, we are now in a much stronger position than we were uh, this time last year. We're now, we are now in a much stronger position than we would have been if we had remained on Labor's forward trajectory. Uh, and, and really that is the uh, important point that the Prime Minister was making. Uh, yes, we need to continue to focus on uh, keeping spending growth under control. Yes, we've got to continue to focus uh, on getting back to certain as soon as possible, uh, but we uh, have made a lot of progress and we can uh, continue to now uh, focus uh, on uh, making progress uh, in, in the most reasonable way possible. But with a dull budget, as the Prime Minister says, that, is that really a way to to sell the, the, the second hockey budget that's going to be dull? Well, it's, it's a budget building uh, on the achievements of uh, the first budget, and it's a budget that essentially is a continuation of the effort. Did you say it's going to be dull? Uh, well, it's, it's going to be uh, our four-year plan uh, from 2015 
15, 16 onwards. And uh, obviously, uh, last year's budget was, uh, you know, a bit exciting. Uh, uh, but, but I mean, first, first term, like the, the first budget of a new government uh, is always obviously a very significant budget because it's a budget where you change direction. We inherited a trajectory that was taking the country in an ever weaker position. Uh, we have uh, worked to turn that uh, trajectory around. We're now on a better trajectory. Uh, and the key is to continue to make progress heading in the right direction and not to go back uh, to the uh, bad ways of the past where Labour was taking us to deeper and deeper deficits and deeper and deeper debt. Uh, and the key is to continue to make progress in the right direction. But to, to say it's a dull budget, uh, frugal, prudent, but yeah. dull, this does not sound like a, a, the greatest marketing exercise that I've heard. Well, so, some people get excited by budgets. Uh, finance ministers get excited by budgets. Other people uh, don't find budgets uh, that exciting. It's uh, it's clearly it's a planning document uh, for government, and it's obviously uh, the uh, plan that we're putting forward once a year uh, to the Australian people to explain where we're headed over the next four years uh, and what we're proposing to do to put the country on a stronger foundation for the future. One final question in relation to the higher education reforms. Uh, they've been blocked in in the Senate. It, uh, I guess the question is, has, did the Prime Minister do enough here? Because if you think back to the Howard years, when there was a problem in the Senate, at the, the last moment, coming in to negotiate would be John Howard. He'd sit down with the crossbench. Today we see on the front page of the Australian, Lambie and Lionhelm saying that the Prime Minister's only met them twice. Why, why would he not engage in this? Well, again, I'm not a commentator, but the government, obviously, we work as a team. Uh, Christopher Pine uh, was doing an outstanding job. I've uh, been working, of course, alongside Christopher Pine, uh, supporting his efforts. Other colleagues have been working to support uh, Christopher's efforts. But, I mean, there's nothing new under the sun. A significant structural reform uh, often <coughs> throughout Australian history has been the subject of uh, intensive conversation, sometimes over a number of years. I mean, that was the case under the previous government. It was the case under the government before. For that. Uh, there's nothing uh, new under the sun when it comes to uh, having to put significant structural reforms uh, to the Senate uh, on more than one occasion. Or the Prime Minister is engaged occasions. normally. The PM uh, hasn't well, engaged and, at and, all. Well, that is the, the Prime Minister was on, engaged in this occasion, of course. It is a very important reform uh, for our universities. We should sit down with the crossbench. Well, uh, Why not? And, and, well, I think that he does sit down with the crossbench. Not, not from what they're that, saying? Well, I, I've read that article and uh, uh, all of them are suggesting that they've had meetings with the Prime Minister, so I don't think that that is quite right. Two in you, Year and a, two in a year and a half. I, I don't know. Again, I'm not going to be a commentator on uh, every aspect of the interaction with crossbenchers, but suffice to say, uh, there is nothing unusual about um, st important structural reforms uh, taking more than one or two or even three attempts to get through the parliament. Uh, because obviously, uh, people want to make sure that we get this right. There's an intensive public conversation um, that will now continue. We are <coughs> going to bring those reforms uh, back to the Senate uh, down the track, and uh, let's hope that uh, we'll be able to get them through next time. Minister, thanks for your time. Always good to be here.